Glory to God in the highest, and praise be to the Lord for this day we mark the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our King, and how He brought joy within our hearts. Let us open our Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 2, from verses 8 to 20, and remind ourselves of the day when the angels proclaimed the birth of Jesus Christ. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem. Then, and see this thing that had happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they have heard and seen, just as had been told them. Praise be to the Lord for the reading of His Word. And let us come to the Lord in prayer as we come to His holy presence. Thank you, Lord God, for the reading of Your Word and indeed of how You proclaim once again in our midst the birth of Jesus Christ. And indeed, Lord, we have all the reason to celebrate and to rejoice for the birth of our King who had brought joy within our hearts. Thank you, Lord God, that we can celebrate your goodness and your love and the joy and the peace that you had given us through Jesus Christ, your Son. And indeed, Lord God, our hearts are overflowing with praises and thanksgiving for what you had done for all of us. And Father, as we celebrate this wonderful occasion, we ask, O Lord, that you may bless our hearts, that our lives, O Lord, will always be pleasing before you, living sacrifices before your holy throne. And we ask, O Lord, that you may bless us, O Lord God, as we come to hear your words for us. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Christmas is the advent of Christ that brought hope, peace, love, and joy. It is all about the arrival and the coming of our King, whom mankind longs for. Christmas marks the coming of Jesus Christ in the physical place when He was born in Bethlehem to save mankind from their sins. The coming of our King also conveys the rule and reign of Jesus Christ in the hearts of the believers when we come to believe and receive Him as Lord. His kingdom now reigns in the hearts of His people. Advent anticipates also the arrival and coming back of Jesus Christ to establish His throne at His second coming when our King will reign and His kingdom will have no end. Now, Christmas will always be a joyful and triumphant occasion, a time for rejoicing, for unto us the Savior was born. Now, what makes Christmas so meaningful is that its unspeakable joy does not depend on the happiness that material things could bring. For the true happiness that Christmas brings comes within our hearts. And the joy that is not only present every Christmas season 
but every day of the year. Now, the message of Christmas proclaimed by the angel the night Jesus was born brings many promises. The birth of our King gave us the promise of eternal joy, comfort, and peace. It brings hope even in, deep, in the deepest times of trial and devastation. It gives good tidings that will bring great joy, and Christmas will always be a time of peace and comfort. The birth of Jesus Christ is celebrated one week before the year ends and the start of the new year, and many are disappointed and frustrated at the end of the year. The promise of Christmas brings hope for those who are heavily laden and new beginning to start with. Similarly, many are filled with fear and afraid of what the year to come would bring. The promise of Christmas brings joy and peace that no matter what stores next year, we can face it with faith for the one who promised is faithful. Now today, as we go back, brothers and sisters in Christ, to the time when the angel proclaimed the birth of Jesus Christ, let us fill our hearts not only with the true message of Christmas, but also of what it proclaims. These proclamations were declared not only to highlight the first Christmas, but also the significance and the purpose of this wonderful occasion. Now, what are the proclamations made that night that should fill our hearts as we celebrate Christmas? The first thing that we need to understand is about the proclamation of the good news of great joy. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Now, the night in which Jesus was born, brothers and sisters in Christ, the angel proclaimed the good news of great joy that is meant for all people. It is not only meant for the Jews, not only meant for the Christians, but also it is meant for all the people. The good, the good news of salvation brought by the birth of a Savior brings great joy within the hearts of people, not only for the Jews but for every human being. Now, the birth of our King brought joy within our hearts. The good news is about the arrival of God's kingdom and the birth of the King who will bring salvation, causing great joy within the hearts of people. The great joy brought by the coming rule and reign of Christ, is Christ the King, is unspeakable joy and beyond expression. It is an everlasting joy that is overwhelming, bringing delight and satisfaction within. In the book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 11, those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. The great and unspeakable joy will be felt by those whom the Lord rescued and saved. Everlasting joy will overtake them that sorrow and sighing will flee away. The unspeakable joy, brothers and sisters in Christ, brought by our King, and by our Savior, Jesus Christ, is promised for those who will experience the salvation of the Lord. The great, unspeakable, and everlasting joy comes not by celebrating Christmas alone, but it is brought when a person experiences the saving grace of the Savior King. Christmas is not only a time of celebration, but also a time of proclamation of the good news great joy. Believers in Christ are called not only to proclaim the good news every Christmas season, but in every season. That's why we can see Paul in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and 2, he said that I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who is to judge the living and the dead. And by his appearing and his kingdom 
Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Today, we do not expect an angel to proclaim again the good news to us. But all of us are given the opportunity to proclaim the gospel to those who does not know it yet. We are called and charged to preach the gospel in season and out of season as we all anticipate the appearing of Christ, Jesus Christ, and His kingdom. As we preach the word, we are to reprove, rebuke, and to correct as well as exhort with complete patience and teaching. Christmas is all about the proclamation of the gospel that brings good news of salvation. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 7, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. There is blessedness, brothers and sisters in Christ, for those believers who will bring the good news in proclaiming peace, good tidings, and salvation to all people for the reign of Christ to be upon their hearts. The good news is about God's kingdom rule in the person of Jesus Christ. We are to proclaim God's kingdom rule as we lead the people to the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, that He may reign in their hearts. But the question that we need to understand today as we celebrate this wonderful occasion is that are we proclaiming the good news the way the angel proclaimed it? I open and pray that we are continuously proclaiming the good news that has been brought into our lives by the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The second thing is the proclamation of the birth of a Savior, Christ the Lord. In Luke chapter 2 from verses 11 to 12, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Now during the night when Jesus was born, an angel appeared to the shepherds who were keeping watch over the flocks, and the glory of God shone upon them. Angels are messengers of God, and that night the angel proclaimed the message that in the town of David, a Savior was born, and He is Christ the Lord. This is the true message of Christmas given by the angel to the shepherds. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, many times we focus only on the birth of Jesus as the proclamation of Christmas. And there is no doubt that it is about the birth of Jesus. It is true that Christmas is all about the birth of Jesus, but if we will study the original message of the angel, it, convey, it conveys other things. And this is the reason why many acknowledge that Christmas is about Jesus' birth, but failed to really understand why He was born. The proclamation of Christmas will not be complete if we acknowledge only the birth of Jesus and without the significance of His coming. What is the proclamation all about? First, it is a proclamation that a Savior has been born. Jesus was born as the Savior of the world. A Savior has been born to us, as the angel had said. It means there is a need for Him to be born, and that is to save us from our sins. The fact that you and I are sinners, and we cannot save ourselves, made God to send His Son to be born here on earth. Jesus was born to die on the cross to save us from our sins. Christmas will only be meaningful if we have received Him as our Savior and saved from our sins. It's all about that He is indeed Christ. 
Not only a Savior has been born, but He is Christ. Jesus came as the Messiah or the Anointed One. It denotes that He was anointed or consecrated to His great redemptive work as prophet, priest, and king of His people. As the Anointed One, this proves the deity of Jesus Christ as being the Son of God. Christmas is all about the incarnate birth of Jesus, wherein God became blessed and dwelt among us. Not only it is about the Savior that has been born, who is Christ, but He is indeed the Lord. Jesus not only came as the Savior and being the Christ, but He is the Lord. He came to rule as, masters of, as Master over our lives. As servants of the Lord, we are called to submit ourselves to Him and obey our Master with whole heart. Christmas will always be meaningful if we know how to obey Him and to do His will in our lives. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Christmas without experiencing the saving grace of the Lord is just an occasion to celebrate without any meaning at all. Christmas is about the Savior who is Christ, the Lord. Have we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior? Have we acknowledged Him as Emmanuel, God with us, who is the Christ? Are we obeying Jesus and doing His will as our Master and Lord? The third proclamation that we have seen from this passage is the proclamation of praise and glory to God. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. In Luke chapter 2, verses 13 to 14. Now, during the first Christmas, there is a proclamation of praise and glory to God. And Christmas is all about the good use of God's rule that brings salvation and the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ, the King. The fact that Jesus came to save mankind should lead us to praise and give glory to God, not only every Christmas, but, all, but at all times. Like the proclamation of the heavenly host, we are not only to proclaim the good news and the birth of the Savior, but we are all called to proclaim our praises in giving glory to God for His rule and reign who brought salvation in our lives. The next is the proclamation of obedience to God. In Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 16, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. That night, there was not only the proclamations made by the angel and the heavenly host, by also, but also the proclamation of obedience to God as they responded to what the Lord has told them about. They immediately hurried off and went to Bethlehem to see what was told to them about Jesus. The message and the sign given to the shepherds gave them the desire to make a decision to go and see the things the Lord told them about. Similarly, the message and sign of Christmas should always lead us to go and see the things God has been told about His words. We need to reflect and see things upon His words, and as we do it, may it always give us hope and peace. We need to act in faith even though circumstances tell us the opposite and find room to praise and glorify our God. The celebration of Christmas will always, meaning, will always be meaningful if we know how to obey God and at the same time obey our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. Christmas is not only a time of celebration, 
but also to reflect on the things that God has brought in our lives and how everything has been told us. Every Christmas is an opportunity to proclaim our obedience to God in response to what the Lord is dealing and leading us. And then the last thing is the proclamation of what has been told. In Luke chapter 2, from verses 17 to 18, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. After the shepherds saw Jesus, they went from there and immediately proclaimed the word concerning about the Lord. And all who heard their testimony were amazed by what the shepherds told them. Christmas is not only the proclamation or proclaiming the good news of salvation, by, but also the pro proclaiming our personal testimony of the goodness of God that He brought into our lives. It is, it is also involves personal witnessing to spread the word concerning what has been told to us about Jesus. The Bible says that we are witnesses of what the Lord has done in our lives and we are called by the Lord to give our testimony about the goodness of how the Lord has given us grace and how He has saved us from our sins. As I end, the proclamation of Christmas should always give us peace, at the same time joy and hope. Like the angel had said to the shepherds, also to Mary and Zechariah, as well as Joseph, we need not to be afraid. Like Mary, we need not to be troubled for we have also found favor with God. The Lord's favor is upon each and every one of us. Like Zechariah, we need not to be afraid when we pray. Our prayers had been heard by our God. God heard our prayers and the Lord is always interceding in behalf of us. We worship a God who answers prayers and mighty above all our needs and problems. Like Joseph, we need not to be afraid as we contemplate on the things we are facing at this time. We have a Savior born to us who can save us. Do not let the enemy rob us of the hope and the joy we have in Jesus. Let the perfect love of God shown to us in the message of Christmas fill our hearts when He gave His Son to be born here on earth. I hope and I pray that God has blessed our hearts as we are reminded by the Lord of the true message of Christmas of, what, of why we are celebrating this wonderful occasion. Truly, we continuously thank the Lord for everything that the Lord has done in our lives, praising Him, glorifying the name of our Lord for how He provided salvation for all of His people. And truly, indeed, the King has been born to us, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we continuously thank the Lord for this wonderful day that the Lord has joined us together in giving glory and praise unto Him. Let us now come to the Lord and let us close into prayer and receive the benediction from our God. O most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that truly we have all the reason to celebrate and to rejoice over the birth of our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Indeed, O Lord, our hearts are overflowing with praises and thanksgiving for everything that you have done for us. And indeed, you remain so faithful to look upon us as your people. We thank you, Father, for indeed the Savior has been born to us, who is Christ the Lord. We acknowledge, Lord, that indeed Jesus is our Savior who has saved us from our sin. He is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One of God. And indeed, Lord, we thank you, Father, for indeed He is now ruling and reigning in our hearts as our Lord and Master. Help us, O oh Father, that indeed we will come to Him and that we are able to obey you, Lord, 
in every areas of our lives. That indeed, O God, as we come to celebrate this wonderful occasion, may the peace and joy and love and hope that you had given us through Jesus Christ continuously rule and reign in our hearts. Father, thank you, Lord, that you are indeed sustaining us even in, even in this time of pandemic. But we have all the reason to celebrate Christmas, that not even this pandemic will able to hinder us in celebration, but we continuously rejoice in your presence today as you had joined us in this wonderful time of worship. We thank you, Father, of how you are giving us grace every day of our lives. And Father, we commit unto you the, your people. May you continuously be with them, O God, and that you will allow them, O Lord God, to experience the joy that is always in their hearts, the peace that transcends all understanding that will guard their hearts and their minds. And at the same time, the eternal hope that as we wait upon the coming of Jesus Christ, indeed our hearts are overwhelmed, overwhelming with hope as we continue to endure every hardship in our lives. And we thank you, Father, for the love that indeed you had shown us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and how you gave him, proving indeed that you love us so much. Father, as we come to end, O oh Lord, our celebration today, may your name continuously be exalted in the midst of us, and that the reign and rule of our King, who is Jesus Christ, continuously be among your people. We thank you, Father. We bless your name. And we bring back to you, Lord, the highest praises, all the glory, and the honor that you deserve alone. For this we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now come to the Lord and let us raise our hands and let us receive the blessing of our God. May the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus bless you and keep you strong during times of testing. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you grace to endure with patience. May he lift up his countenance upon you to make you perfect and complete in him, to establish you clearly in the direction he gives you, to strengthen you through spiritual knowledge and by the power of the Holy Spirit as you seek him with all your heart. May the Lord settle you, making you secure and confident in his love and provision for your peace and well-being. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our services ended. May you go always in peace with the love of our God. And I continuously greet you all a Merry Christmas and advance Happy New Year. May the Lord bless us all.